what is this? Another Wednesday morning? I'm calling it morning because 4.30 is morning to us now. I know, I know you. I know you. You just woke up for this show, right? Right. Let's scooch over a little as we get into this show that I love, that you love. Hi to you with the John is Charlie. Let's go. Happens every week on Wednesdays. This is the show where we cover topics global, provincial, uh, municipal, uh, at a county ward based level, maybe even a bit too personal in this show that I call a little midday burst of energy, like your favorite caffeinated drink, high tea, you know, delicious, British. They, they know how to do watery leaves. What's going on? So many things. And we're going to get into it in this segmented show. But before that, you know what? I'm going to ask you for money straight up. Can you please donate? My pockets are thin and I need them to be thick. So you can hit this donation link at baddogtheater.com slash high dash T. But you might not be convinced yet. So you know what? Stick around for the next 30 to 35 minutes and be convinced with this. Let's thicken the pockets. Hashtag thicken the pockets. And that hashtag is brought to you by tech producer extraordinaire Sean Murray in the booth. How's it going, Ajanis? Good. I have another new shirt to show off for high tea. What do you think? You I think? like it. I like the I like the color balance. It's got a sort of a wintry vibe, and it's like a little chilly today, so it feels right. It feels like uh, Christmas formal. Right? This is Christmas formal. It's a nice mix. It's a nice uh, introduction into the winter that will be arriving in about two weeks. So I think it might be the right call. I feel like you've coordinated with your headphone cord as well. So I oh, appreciate true. that. true. It's just a little accent. Like, I, I walk out with this hanging around just for fashion white pants alert i'm back at it again with the classic white pants because i don't own any shorts so these are the like freshest thing the most air aerating thing i have for the summer but that's just me i'm problematic and haven't been to a unique low or h&m in quarantine which is honestly probably for the best both for my physical health but also environment fast fashion you're not welcome on high tea but you know what is welcome in high tea? Actual tea for this segment. What's the tea? And the tea today is, as I just spoiled, actual tea. In fact, we got the best kind of tea in the house. We got some boba. Woo this is my boba manifesto. I'm gonna have bubble tea. Oh, we have the legendary Goncha Bubble Tea with the tapioca on deck. See, do you see this? This is so much boba. Oh, I think this is about six weeks in a row that we've been drinking actual tea for this show. Do you remember those broke early days where I was coming in drinking wine water ginger ale pretending like it was tea because i didn't have time to steep or buy anything times have changed it's really only it's, it's really only the diehard fans that would remember why we'd be so surprised that you're drinking tea on high tea yeah, see if you if you if you aren't surprised then you got to go back and watch and you got to stick around for more surprises because the real ones get rewarded okay you're drinking boba tea. It's a ruby black milk tea. And I want to inform you about what this tea blend is because I just learned it. Um, so the, the RBT ruby black tea leaves are a perfect blend of Assam black tea and Formosa black tea. Put it together, add a little bit of sugar, tapioca, boom, 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 bam. You have this amazing boba. And I'm hoping that you have a boba, a black tea, something to sip on for this show because we're about to get into some good, good segments that require a little bit of hydration, okay? So let's take a sip before we move on. Mm. 
Number one real one and breaking news correspondent, Andrea Marston, remembers the ginger ale days. And you should too. You should too. But there'll be days to remember soon. We're making new memories right here, right now. Okay, are we ready? My mouth is full of boba. I can barely talk, but let's get into our next segment, the serve, where I'm serving you not a half pot of tea, not just a cup. I'm serving you the whole thing, the whole teapot with these headlines that may or not be may or may not be fully informed by my interpretation of the news, but we'll have to read them and see. So <clears throat> These are our headlines I'm serving to you this week. Hold on, let me just chew this boba first and swallow it. Uh, I love drinks that are food. Mm. I'm so sorry, this is so unprofessional. Yeah, you know, please donate. This is my boba manifesto. I'm gonna have bubble tea. I want that. Do not choke on boba. That is one of the worst ways. Oh, it's actually not a bad way to go. Um, please donate to sustain my boba fund. Let's get into these headlines. <clears throat> Asteroid narrowly misses Earth, claiming that things are going bad enough. And that really did happen just now. Democratic and Republican parties reach bipartisan agreement to remain partisan forever. I don't know if that's an interpretation that might just be real. Earth quietly suggests tackling climate change by hitting the U.S. with two hurricanes and two wildfires. That's just her subtly, Earth is just subtly putting it out there. Breaking news, Gen Zer thinks Hurricane Katrina is a drag queen. That Gen Zer is me. Sorry about it. Nick Nurse voted NBA Best NBA Coach of the Year and Worst Medical pr Practitioner of the Year. So Nick Nurse might want to go back to med school. McMaster is a great one if you want to stay local-ish. And our last headline for today, man who stayed inside for BLM protests willing to risk it all for... Christopher Nolan film. And I only have one word for him. Tenet. And those are our headlines. Cute, quick, and easy. And delicious. Just like boba. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Mm. But what's this? What is this I am hearing? Oh, I believe we are getting a new breaking news segment broadcasting live from our correspondent, Andrea Marston. Take a look. This just in from the pandemic, Andrew Marston is taking time to focus on herself and has deleted all dating apps. Stay tuned for the latest update on the self-improvement. Breaking news from the pandemic, Andrew Marston was sitting on the toilet and was bored where she downloaded Tinder again only 30 hours after deleting it. Stay tuned for the latest update. This just in from breaking news with Andrew Marston where she has deleted Tinder again after she found nobody was spelling up to her standards. Stay tuned for the latest updates on whether she will re-download these dating apps. Welcome back to breaking news with Andrea Marston where she has once again downloaded Bumble after seeing an ex of hers has recently got married. Stay tuned to see how long this will last. For Breaking News, this is Andrew. Welcome back to Breaking News with Andrew Marston, where she has once again deleted her dating apps after she could not find a single man in Alberta not holding a fish. Stay tuned to see how long this will last. For Breaking News, I'm Andrew Marston. And finally, on Breaking News with Andrew Marston, reports are coming in that Andrew Marston has decided to be alone forever after too many men have asked her to tell them a joke or commented on the shape of her body. For Breaking News, this is Andrew Marston. Have a great night. <laughs> You are now watching 60 Seconds with Black Bar Walters. I'm your host, Black Bar Walters, investigative journalist extraordinaire, always willing to get down and deep into the depths about a specific person and get you the real scoop on who they are. I'm very happy, oh so proud, to be talking to and digging into a very special, special person today, Another bad dog comedy TV superstar, excellent, excellent man. 
Anders Yates. But before I get into having him on the stream, I just want to talk about well, what's his deal, what do you do, and why I'm having him in here. One, this man is a host of the Bad Dog Comedy TV show, The Oval, which is this improvised social media reality TV show based off the Netflix hit, The Circle. And I have seen some great performers go through that little weird electronic room and come out with $100,000. I love that show. I watch it all the time. Two, another reason why I love having the opportunity to talk about Anders Yates. The man is very tall. And as someone who doesn't quite measure up, in case you can't tell, in this digital medium, I am below five foot five. I would love to learn the experience of a man who towers way over six feet. It's not something I've gotten to do yet. I, I believe everybody I've interviewed so far has been quite short, like minuscule, like microscopic. But I'm so excited to be able to interview someone who is exceptionally talented and tall tallented. <laughs> no one said Blackborough couldn't be funny, but here I am being Blackborough, being funny. I can't wait to get into this interview. A third reason we want to get into this interview. He's a very funny person. He did a solo sketch comedy show at Toronto Sketch Fest. Just now he's been a part of the Montreal-based Sketch comedy troupe uncalled for, and he'll tell me if that's wrong because I'm about to interview him. You know what? Give him a huge round of applause for Anders Yates. Anders, thank you. How are you doing? Oh, Anders is just waking up. Hello, thank you for having me. Thank you so much for being uh, here, Anders. I'm sorry. I just, you know, this is morning, technically. <laughs> it pleasure. is morning. It's four. It's 4.30, people are just waking up, I swear to goodness. Are you ready to answer some super quick, super speedy questions about you? I hope so, uh, if my computer doesn't crash. Okay, we'll extend it. Well, let's extend the clock to 75 seconds. That's a whole 25% added in order to make up for whatever digital connection is <laughs> trying to take us down. I'm Blackborough. I do have enemies. But let's get into it regardless. 75 seconds on the clock. And let us... Oh, it is going. Okay, I cannot see with these sunglasses on. What is your name? It's a hard question. Your name, you gotta know it. I hope you know it. I think I think I've stumped him. Okay, we'll give it a pass. We'll give it a pass. <laughs> what city are you from? I swear I know my name. Oh, do you? What is it? What is I need to know. <laughs> I'm from what? Montreal. You're from Montreal? <laughs> That's a perfect city. What is your favorite reality TV show? <laughs> yes. I, yes. Okay. Okay. Maybe that's the. Uh, I. You know what? I agree. The circle. As a professional, the circle. That's a great answer. Grace says reality TV show. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. You heard that, everyone. Listen to this wise, wise man. What is your favorite type of tea? It's a tricky one. There are wrong answers. Green. I like green tea. That is not a wrong answer. That is completely correct. But bubble tea and is delicious. Bubble tea is delicious. We put time back on the clock. I will hit you with one. <laughs> Last question. This one's a tough one. This one's a tough one. You can take okay. all the time you need to answer this one. One actor will disappear forever, and their previous roles will be retconned 
into being played by Kevin Hart. Which actor do you choose? Tough choice. Uh, Angelina Jolie. Angelina Jolie. I would kill to see Kevin Hart try to take on Tomb Raider. I think that if, if the games also took after his likeness too, <laughs> I would actually be very happy. Those are all perfect <laughs> answers. Buzzer it's sound. It is. <laughs> Anders, thank you so much. We've done it. We've completed the 60 second rapid fire interview. I think I've learned so much about you and your internet connection. I think we've been just as uh, acquainted with that too. <laughs> Anders, thank you so much for coming on the show. I know what you're gonna plug, you. so I'll, I'll give it a little plug for you. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Everyone, please tune in to the Oval every Wednesday at 9.30 EST. That's a little bit after this very show. It'll be happening tonight. There are always amazing guests. Probably a good idea. It is hosted by a wide awake Anders Yates who agrees it's probably a good idea to watch this show. So thank you, Anders. Thank you, everyone. It, his internet always works on the show. I can confirm. I watch it. Thank you, everyone, for tuning into 60 Seconds with Black Bear Walters. I really can't see what those glasses are. Now, if you haven't taken a moment to maybe mm, pour a little bit of coin into that bad dog donation link, which you can find here, I'm bumping it for the third time in one episode. This is a new record. Thick in the pockets, please, for more deep journalistic content that will always tickle your ethics. It'll tickle your, your morals. And if that's enough journalism for you, why don't we take something a little bit lighter for your entertainment? Texas, Arizona, I guess not these guys anymore. Be All these basic hoes be going out. Head to the beach, a bar downtown. The jersey flying out of their dirty mouth. Guess that's why they call it the dirty south. Corona, wash your clothes. Lord knows that I'm on ya. Wear a mask or I'm coming down. Your throat, I'm coming if you don't stay. At home, think I'm tapping? Guess what finna happen? All y'all motherfuckers getting coronavirus. Y'all motherfuckers getting coronavirus. All y'all motherfuckers getting coronavirus. Y'all motherfuckers getting coronavirus. All y'all motherfuckers getting coronavirus. Y'all motherfuckers getting coronavirus. All y'all motherfuckers getting coronavirus. Y'all motherfuckers getting coronavirus. Here it is, second wave, cause you won't cover your face. I'll make sure you catch a case. Breaking records in the States. Disney World, open up, no one coming to that place. Always wanted to see a small world in mission space. Watching cases go spike, 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 spike. Just so you could take some beach stock pics for a like. And then watch your lungs go overnight. Cause y'all refuse to believe the hype. Fuck hydroxychloroquine, I'm no fake ass hoe. I'm realer than a motherfucker, you already know. I'm thicker than you, mucus. I don't shop on Insta BTs. Can't flatten this curve or this thick ass booty, cuz. All y'all motherfuckers getting coronavirus. Y'all motherfuckers getting coronavirus. All y'all motherfuckers getting coronavirus. Y'all motherfuckers getting coronavirus. All y'all motherfuckers getting coronavirus. Y'all motherfuckers getting coronavirus. All y'all motherfuckers getting coronavirus yeah motherfuckers getting coronavirus i tried to tell y'all but you wouldn't listen now corona's coming for necks lungs nasal cavities and your sense of smell corona mm. oh oh 
Ooh, just got out of the bathroom. I saw what happened there. I saw Blackborough taking taking over. I mean, I still don't have actual physical proof I could send to like a police agency or anything. Oh, there's the proof. Blackboro Walters on camera. Looking kind of cool. I love the glasses. I wonder if she can see in those. Probably not. But now I have evidence that Blackboro Walters has been taking over. I will get to the bottom of what she's trying to do. But I will say, I did watch the interview with Anders, and I loved it. I loved it. I don't even mind that it was a bit more than 60 seconds because it gave me more time in the bathroom. So I am thankful. <laughs> I just noticed that I'm applying lip balm midstream. Got to keep it classy. Okay, let's keep it moving. Let's keep it moving. We had a great interview. We had a great, a cute little headlines. We have a great shirt. Now, here's something for... Here's something that's maybe not great, but better, because it's good. And it is the good dog of the week. <sighs> the most beautiful, pure segment of, <laughs> did you see the screen shake? Good dog of the week, ah! Screen shake for emphasis. This is a segment where we take a good dog from the Toronto comedy community generally, and put them on the pedestal that they deserve, because dogs be good. Now, I'm very excited to be speaking about this dog today. Sean, shall we? This is Perry. Perry is partnered with a good friend of mine, Toronto improviser, Linda Julia Paolucci, LJP, and we are dealing with the sassiest little boy in the city. Look at this cutie. Just a tiny little teacup dog. And you know we love teacups on this stream. Oh, Perry is, let me describe to you who Perry is. A little bit about him. Perry is a sweet little goblin. As you can tell by the fact that he's giving like the cutest little war cry in his apparently Christmas themed sweater, or it might just be a red and white aesthetic. Either way, Perry is working that outfit. Um, I feel like I'm the one who should be screaming instead of Perry because I am shook. I'm gagged. I wanna see more of this dog. Let's see more of this dog. Look at little Perry. Perry can do both. Perry can serve looks, but also serve the sports jersey. Perry, the number one Toronto Maple Leafs fan, despite them not doing well in the playoffs, I hear. That's going to be the one thing, the one sports fact I know. Leafs, I'm sorry, I just don't know you. But Perry does, and Perry is a stan. Looks like Perry's mastered the over-the-shoulder look. Very casual, but obviously very indicative that this dog knows how to model. Okay. Perry is fashion. Perry is fashion. And I think we can all agree. Also, it's International Dog Day. Thanks, Andrea, for, for mentioning that. It's International Dog Day, and we have an international superstar here on this episode of High Tea. Let's see a little, little bit more of Perry. Uh, who hasn't? Who hasn't stared lustfully at a little McCain's tater, tater tot potato smiley face? Okay, there is no greater frozen food that when defrosted, you crave for. There's nothing better than a smiley face potato fry thing. What are they called? I don't know if they have an actual name. What I know is that... All I know is that I agree with Perry here and that I want them. Please. Uh, let's let's see what else Perry has got. Oh, see. Beautiful. Be beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And clearly we are the ones beholding. 
lovely Perry. You see, and do you see, you can see like the cause and effect of, yes, this is what's happening. <laughs> oh, Perry is a panicky little, little boy. He loves to panic, but we love, we love a cute panic every now and again. We love a screamy little sis. Um, let me talk about Perry and his background a little bit. Perry is a six-year-old rescue chihuahua something mix. It's a cute little mix. And Perry, whenever Perry has to pee, he sits by the door and growls a little bit, which is... I do the same. I do the same. When I got to use the, the bathroom, I'm screaming too. So Perry, I support you. Perry is a bossy top with a heart of gold. Aw, I love it. And has the world's tiniest face. It's so tiny, it's so cute. You can just pinch those little bitty cheeks. And Perry can hear a chip bag opening on the other side of the country with his antenna ears. And given that this is LJP's boyfriend's dog, this is technically her stepdog. So, I love a step relationship. I love a cute step relationship. Do we have anything more of Perry? Let's see. <laughs> How are you Just afraid Perry of this little blue man? <laughs> alerting the world to the dangers of little blue man. Ra ra ra. Ra ra ra. Well reasoned. That is a well reasoned <laughs> argument against the blue man group, if I've ever seen one. I think we should all be barking in terror when we see little blue men coming up into our neighborhoods. Right? They're scarier than they let on. And Perry, thank you for your vigilance. I feel safer knowing that there are Perrys in the world protecting us from finger puppet blue robots. Thank you, Perry. Thank you, Perry. Thank you, LJP, and thank you, Perry, for being the good dog of the week. The goodest dog. I love him. But now that our hearts are full, it's time to get angry, get, get riled up, get real with today's, and that's that on that, called On Kenosha. So let's get right into it. I'm just going to go off here, okay? I'm sorry that this rant isn't going to be very funny, but some topics are too brutal, too tragic to really find the light in them. So Kenosha is a small city in Wisconsin off the coast of Lake Michigan, and it is the spot where on Sunday, Jacob Blake de-escalated a domestic incident. Nonetheless, the police were called and arrived on the scene, and they tasered Blake while he tried to, and then when he tried to walk away, they shot the husband and father, black man, seven times in the back. Luckily, he's in stable condition. Luckily. So let's start discussing, discussing some terrifying things. The police force that thought showing up ready to apply deadly force without question, terrifying. The calls from the US government to now violently suppressed the well-reasoned unrest that rose in the city? Terrifying. The white militia that fired upon the protesters there, murdering two and injuring more? Terrifying. We've been trying to sustain a conversation about Black lives and about systemic racism and about oppressive police forces. Yet again, there is proof that these are pressing issues, but it shouldn't take extreme violence enacted upon Black people Black deaths shared on screens and feeds for people to get the message that something needs to be done. Recklessly sharing Black people being gunned down in your Facebook posts, I have to say, is harmful and traumatizing to your Black friends who, by the way, don't need these posts as a reminder. And you have, if you have non-Black friends who need this kind of imagery to be convinced about the dire state of things, then you might need to have a deeper conversation than just passively sharing these couple posts. That doesn't mean you stop sharing resources 
news and infographics. I'm just asking you to be cognizant of who your black friends are, what they're seeing, and please tell me you have at least one black friend on your Facebook feed. Please, at least. Since we are having this conversation again, just like we did, just like it the, the peaked a little bit ago, I feel like it might be worth going over a few th terms again, just so we could remain on the same page. ACAB means ACAB. Yes, all cops are bastards, every single one. When you have cops actively facilitating white supremacist violence, like what happened in Kenosha, where they actively supported the racist militia, hung out with them, gave them water. You can't really argue otherwise that cops aren't bastards. There are no good apples. The bunch is spoiled. Defund the police means defund the police, not reduce funding. The police as a system needs to be abolished and the resistance you feel against it comes from your own continued privilege of living in a system that doesn't victimize you. Policing does nothing to prevent crime and clearly it even exacerbates it. Black Lives Matter means Black Lives Matter. Now, forever and always. Cops have continued to harm and kill people every day. Every day. So, we should be trying to further this we should be trying to further this conversation at least as often as that. If we are truly afraid of the terrible violence that we are so eager to share, well, we should be as eager to apply whatever means necessary to cease that violence. And that's that on that. That's that. I spilled that tea. I spilled it. I spilled it. I told you. Actual tea. Actual tea right there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right here. Right, right there. I gave it to you. And if you agree that I gave it to you, hmm, why don't you give something to me? <laughs> Sean knows I'm about to come back with a donation request. If you find this show or any show like this on Bad Dog Comedy TV funny, inspiring, informative, please feel free to give a small or large donation here at Bad Dog Comedy, uh, baddogtheater.com slash high dash T. And you know what? Check out any other great show on Bad Dog Comedy TV. There are shows Monday through Friday, and they're all so amazing. Every Wednesday, I, I you, already know, you already know, I say this every Wednesday, but we have the Oval coming down the line at 9.30 p.m. on this day, which is a great social media-infused show that's a, a spoof on The Circle that happens all in this little screen. It's an incredible show. Don't miss it. It's very fun. I know. I was on it. <laughs> There's shows every day of the week. Um, they're all good. Watch them all. I'm going to... I have stuff to plug in here, too. I have some podcast episodes you can listen to. Ooh, I didn't tell Sean I was going to do this, <laughs> so he could have been a bit more prepared. But check out... I'm watching a movie. That's S H H. I'm watching a movie on. Uh, it's on Sonar Network. You find it on Spotify. Where that's it. That's it. Where I recently did an episode about the movie Cars, and it is <laughs> insane. It's a wild world. I highly suggest checking it out if you need to be informed, and I think you do. I've also done a podcast episode recently on Escape Capades, which is Shannon LaHaye's uh, podcast with Chelsea Larkin. And that was also very fun, Escape Capades. You can also find that on the Sonar Network. It is there for you. And the last most recent podcast episode I did, The H Word, with, which is Becky Johnson's um, podcast, where I got to talk about modular comedy, spatial interactions with specific conflicts, and so much more. And that's also available on Spotify. Go check it out. I am speaking to you. If this show isn't enough, there is stuff out there for you. And that's it. 
that's the whole show. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you had a good time. You know where I'll be. I'm always here every Wednesday. So come on back. We'll, we'll catch up. I'll spill the tea. And in the meantime, grab your little drinky drinks. Put it up to your lippy lips and sip, sip, sis. Mm, mm. That's a good tea. That is a good tea. You can really taste the, the fossum black tea in this ruby. It tastes so good.